How's it going everyone? My name is Dan, but you can call me Malone, and it's about time we talk about what's going on in the UK. The British pound is down big against other major currencies in the last 30 days. The currency collapse has been so bad that the sterling hit a record low against the dollar, edging close to dollar parity at a 20% loss so far this year. Meanwhile, the UK government's economic policy changes have been openly criticised by the likes of the International Monetary Fund, with some suggesting that the UK economy economy is on the brink of bankruptcy. All the while, UK inflation is still sitting close to 40-year highs at 9.9%, while the Bank of England continues to increase interest rates in response. So let's talk about what caused the current crisis in the UK, why the British pound is collapsing, and what all of this could mean for the nation going forward. Before we do, could I ask that you take just two seconds out of your day to prevent this video from collapsing by leaving a like and commenting down below with your thoughts on the UK situation. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new around here and let's get into the video. All right, so to understand why the British pound is collapsing, we first need to talk about the current political situation in the UK. Liz Truss became Prime Minister of the UK earlier this month, replacing the previous Prime Minister Boris Johnson. Liz's entry into office was largely overshadowed by the death of Queen Elizabeth, which happened right after she formally became Prime Minister. Liz's government had a significant task in front of them from the get-go. UK inflation is at multi-decade highs. The cost of domestic gas in the UK has increased by 96% since August 2021 and domestic electricity prices have increased by 54% over the same period, largely attributable to the conflict in Ukraine as we're all aware. This has sparked a cost of living crisis in the UK and has put many UK households under significant pressure. Now this isn't something which is unique to the UK. We just released a video talking about measures which were introduced by the Irish government to tackle a similar cost of living crisis in Ireland. Ireland. But UK inflation is higher than what's being experienced in the US and throughout the Eurozone. So the situation is particularly bad there. 87% of UK adults reported an increase in their cost of living between August and September, with low income households being disproportionately affected. If you're watching this from the UK, let me know if you've experienced any of this increase in cost of living firsthand. So the cost of living crisis is one component of the equation. Then you also have the Bank of England. The Bank of England has increased increased interest rates from virtually zero at the end of 2021 to 2.25% today. They've done this in response to inflation. Essentially, when the Bank of England increases interest rates, it becomes more expensive for UK businesses and individuals to borrow money from high street banks. Idea being that this will tighten the money supply in the economy, reduce consumer demand, and therefore cool inflation. The Bank of England was the first of the major central banks to increase interest rates in response to post-pandemic inflation. But yet the bank has been criticised for not increasing rates fast enough to maintain price stability. However, according to a report published by the bank, if they had aggressively increased interest rates to achieve their target inflation rate of 2%, unemployment would have skyrocketed. Plus, when you consider that borrowing costs in the UK are at their highest level since 2008, and that the Bank of England believes that the UK economy is already in a recession, it's understandable why the central bank was hesitant to raise rates as fast as their counterparts in the United States. So that paints a picture of the hand that Liz Truss was dealt as the new Prime Minister of the UK. Her government would have the opportunity to show the UK and the rest of the world what their intentions were to solve the variety of problems which the nation faced with the so-called mini-budget that was released on the 23rd of September. The details of this mini-budget, which were announced by the Chancellor of the Exchequer, is what caused the chaos which we're currently seeing in the UK markets. So what measures were announced as part of this mini-budget? The changes that were introduced represents some of the biggest tax cuts that the UK has seen in 50 years. So big that the government has estimated that it will cost £36 billion. The whole idea behind the mini budget was to introduce measures that would encourage economic growth. By cutting taxes, you let people keep more of their money, which means they have more money to spend. Pretty counterintuitive at a time when the Bank of England is increasing interest rates to slow consumer spending. As part of the budget, national insurance rates were cut, new levies were cancelled, higher taxes on investment income were reverted, the basic rate of income tax was cut for the first time in 15 years at a cost of 5 billion, the 45% higher rate of income tax was removed completely, a planned increase in corporation tax was cancelled, temporary higher tax reliefs for capital expenditure were made permanent, and stamp duty tax bans were widened. KPMG estimates that in addition to already announced energy cost supports, all of this will cost the UK 100 billion pounds. Pretty substantial for an economy 
economy in recession. What's causing most frustration is that the lion's share of the benefit associated with these costly changes will go to the wealthy. The International Monetary Fund has said that the changes will likely increase inequality in the UK. Income inequality in the UK is already among the highest in the OECD, barely trailing the United States. So the fear is that these changes will only serve to benefit the most well-off of UK families at the cost of the UK's financial stability and of less well-off households. The Resolution Foundation gave a stark example highlighting who truly stands to gain from the changes introduced under the mini-budget. An individual earning £200,000 per year will gain £5,220 per year from the changes, while an individual earning £1 million will gain £55,220. Conversely, an individual earning £20,000 will only gain £157 per year. A graphic on Twitter also painted a grim picture of the realities of the changes, with the highest family incomes benefiting exponentially more than the lower earning families. That brings us on to the crash of the British pound. The simple explanation behind the pound's decline is that the currency markets have turned against the UK. The markets recognise that Liz Truss's government has introduced policies that are counterproductive to solving the UK cost of living crisis, while also promoting inequality. They also recognise that the policy changes will incite further intervention from the central bank. The Bank of England's chief economist has said that the government's mini budget will require a significant monetary policy response from the central bank. So what you have is the government on one side trying to stimulate the economy through tax cuts, while at the exact same time, you have the central bank on the other side trying to tighten the economy by increasing interest rates. Essentially, two policymakers working against each other. This has led to the likes of mortgage lenders halting mortgage offers to new customers because they're anticipating larger interest rate hikes in the near future. The reason why that matters and why it influences lender behavior is because the lender needs to be certain that they're going to earn a sufficient profit margin on the loan, given that they too are impacted by changes in central bank rates. That's because central bank rates influence the rate at which banks borrow and lend money to and from one another. So the bank will need to ensure that what they're charging you for your loan is enough to cover the cost that they paid to borrow the money in the first place and then some. Economists are now anticipating UK interest rates to reach 5.5% or even higher by next spring. That would see borrowing costs reach their highest level since 07. That spells bad news for mortgage repayments. More than 2 million UK households will have to remortgage at higher interest rates in the next two years. According to Pantheon Economics, the average household refinancing a two-year fixed rate mortgage in the first half of 2023 could see monthly repayments jump from £863 to £1,490, an increase of 73%. Any UK homeowners with a variable rate or tracker rate mortgage is going to be hit with higher monthly repayments as rates rise. Higher borrowing costs also spell bad news for house prices, given that higher rates typically erode the demand for housing. The reason why is because it becomes increasingly unaffordable for the likes of first-time buyers to enter the housing market due to the high cost of borrowing. Credit Suisse noted that UK house prices could easily fall between 10 to 15% over the next 18 months if borrowing costs continue to rise, causing further hardship for UK households. With regards to the falling pound, the Bank of England doesn't want to see it, given that a falling pound worsens the cost of living crisis for UK households. When the pound is worth less relative to other currencies like the US dollar, the cost of importing goods goes up. Data from 2020 shows that the UK imports 46% of the food which it consumes. So you can imagine what higher import costs would do to the pockets of UK consumers. But it's not just food. Imported gas, petrol, virtually anything that isn't manufactured or sourced in the UK could be affected by a weaker pound. Even UK manufactured items could be affected if some of the parts used in the manufacturing process are imported. So the central bank wouldn't hesitate to aggressively increase rates in order to bolster the value of the UK's currency. Ultimately, the mini budget has caused chaos in the UK markets. It's estimated that the UK stock and bond markets have already lost $500 billion in value since Liz Truss became Prime Minister at the beginning of September, which is a pretty impressive feat in itself. The UK bond market saw the biggest ever one-day sell-off of government bonds in response to the measures put forward by the government. Given that bond prices and bond yields have an inverse 
inverse relationship, i.e. one goes up as the other goes down, yields on UK 10-year government bonds rose exponentially, up 325% in 2022. Why does this matter? It matters because higher yields on government bonds makes it more expensive for the UK government to borrow money. Because of the tax cuts in the mini budget, it's now forecasted that by 2026-27, the UK's borrowing will be over £110 billion. £80 billion pounds higher than the forecast which was given in March. So you can see why there's cause for concern over rising borrowing costs and the impact that this will have on the UK economy. Rising UK government bond yields also impact bond prices and yields on non-government bonds like corporate bonds. In turn, this makes corporate borrowing more expensive, which can hinder the growth potential of many UK companies. According to Reuters, the market IBOX sterling corporate bond index has fallen 10.2% so far in September, on track for the worst monthly performance since 1999. The ICE Bank of America Sterling Non-Gilt Index, which measures the price performance of UK investment grade bonds, has fallen 9.8% in September, on track for the worst monthly performance since records began. Clearly, the UK bond market is not in good shape. Meanwhile, the FTSE 100, which measures the stock price performance of the 100 largest companies listed on the London Stock Exchange, is down over 6% in September. What you need to realize is that all of this poor market performance directly impacts the retirement accounts and personal investment portfolios of regular UK citizens. The Bank of England has stepped in to reaffirm the markets that it will start buying long-term UK government bonds in order to get yields and borrowing costs under control, stating that the current situation posed a material risk to UK financial stability. However, this tactic known as quantitative easing is what contributed to the inflation which we're currently seeing on a global scale. Quantitative easing, or QE for short, is where central banks decide to buy billions worth of financial assets like government bonds. They do this to raise the price of said bonds, i.e. through higher demand, which in turn causes bond yields to fall. Remember that inverse relationship between bond prices and yields. QE makes borrowing money cheaper, therefore resulting in more money circulating in the economy, which encourages spending. So the Bank of England is technically somewhat counteracting its own anti-inflation policies by stepping in to help the UK bond market. Overall, it really feels like the UK has taken 10 steps back with this mini budget. The government made the mistake of introducing unsustainable and unaffordable policy changes, which stand solely to benefit the wealthy, at a time when monetary conservatism was needed. This just goes to show that it's not as easy as just giving handouts to everyone when it comes to budget decisions. Now more than ever, governments need to be extra prudent with their spending. As we saw in the most recent Irish budget, the Minister for Finance ensured that the bulk of cost of living support was going towards once-off, not permanent measures. Contrast this to the UK's mini-budget, which has introduced a slew of permanent tax cuts. When a change is made permanent, you better be confident that you'll have enough tax revenue each year thereafter to pay for it, which the UK won't. If the government's policy changes aren't reconsidered, the Bank of England will have no choice but to increase rates even further, which will likely send the UK into a deeper recession and make life even harder for those less well off. I want to hear from you, especially if you're watching this from the UK. What are your thoughts on the UK's current economic situation? What do you think needs to happen in the UK to regain some sense of normality? Have you or any of your friends and family been directly impacted by the current crisis in the UK? Let me know in the comments. So I really do hope you enjoyed the video here today. As always, if you did enjoy the video, please do let me know in the comment section below. Leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers!